Good morning and welcome to the American Heart Association's 2020 Austin Heart and Stroke Walk Digital Experience. I'm Sally Hernandez. And I'm Tom Miller with KXAN News Today. KXAN is a proud supporter of the American Heart Association and their mission for a world of longer, healthier lives. Today is a day of celebration where we get to virtually, of course, come yes. together so we can raise awareness and raise our spirits Think about everything that you've accomplished this year, the steps that you've taken, the miles that you've ran, local fundraisers that you've organized. It all counts and it all makes a difference. Everything that you've accomplished on behalf of the American Heart Association will allow them the opportunity to continue its life-saving mission. And we hope that you will be inspired by today's event and that you will celebrate with us right where you are. That's right. This year's Reimagine Heart Walk will be the biggest ever as we bring you the experience right to you. You can walk wherever you are, joining one million walkers from across the nation. If you feel so inclined, support the American Heart Association and give this morning by texting your gift to the number in the chat box or by visiting austinheartwalk.org to donate. That's right. You can also show your support by snapping selfies with the family as you walk, you run, yeah. as you're dancing, whatever it is this <laughs> morning. Take a minute to pull out those phones, pull up your sleeves, and share your selfies with us on Facebook. Tag American Heart TX with the hashtag ATX Heart Walk. And be sure you make your post public so we can all see them and we can all share them so we can celebrate together. Today is indeed a celebration. So why are we all here? COVID-19 has changed the way that we live our lives and the American Heart Association has invested $2.5 million in a rapid response fund to research how this virus affects heart and stroke patients. Since the start of the pandemic, we have seen disproportionate rates of sickness and death emerging among people of color. But even before the pandemic, Factors like zip code, income, and race, they all influence how we live and how long we live. We see it here in Austin where life expectancy can differ by more than 20 years for people living just three miles apart. And that is why the American Heart Association launched the Community Impact Campaign in April. This campaign, along with the work of our advocacy teams, sought to provide blood pressure monitoring devices and exercise equipment to communities with a greater need during this time. In addition, we've supported healthcare workers on the front lines by providing resources and training based on the latest research and information available. And at the American Heart Association, the mission is simple, to be a relentless force for a world of longer, healthier lives. Yeah. And at the Heart Walk, we bring the mission to life by getting out and getting active and pledging to stay healthy for good. And that is as important today as ever. Before we get started with our program, I wanted to take a moment to give a heartfelt thank you to all of our local health care providers who are working tirelessly to keep us safe. We appreciate you so much. Yes, we do. We really do. We also want to start off this great event with a shout out to our amazing sponsors. This event would not be possible without you. Our Healthy for Good sponsors, Texas Mutual Insurance Company and Ascension Seton have been instrumental in the success of this event. Thank you so much for your continued support. We'd also like to recognize our life is why sponsors. These four companies have been working alongside the American Heart Association to tackle the issues impacting families right here in Austin. And a special thank you to our top sponsors, Abbott Brown Distributing Company, Harvey Cleary Builders, HEB, St. David's Healthcare, and Samsung Austin Semiconductor. Thank you, sponsors. Strong community support is the lifeblood of the American Heart Association. It's because of local businesses, community leaders, and volunteers that this organization is able to support our community especially during times like these. And speaking of leadership, I'd like to introduce the 2020 Austin Heart and Stroke Walk co-chairs, Andy Davis, president of the CEO and of Extension Texas, and Dr. Mark Pierwitz, president and CEO of Seton Heart Institute. 
Hi, my name is Dr. Mark Perwitz. I'm an interventional cardiologist and CEO of the Seton Heart Institute, and I serve as co-chair of the 2020 Austin Heart and Stroke Walk. First off, I'd like to start out by saying thank you very much for standing with the American Heart Association's mission for longer and healthier lives. Taking a look at the world around us, the work of the AHA is instrumental in helping uh, survivors have more time with their loved ones and creating a community of health here in Central Texas, both equitable and accessible to all. Someone in the U.S. dies of a stroke every four minutes and from heart disease every 84 seconds. Uh, even now during the COVID-19 pandemic, it's important to encourage people to continue to seek medical attention uh, should they experience symptoms of stroke or heart attack. Recent studies have shown that patients with heart disease have a tenfold increase in mortality should they develop COVID-19. Additionally, it's also been shown that here recently during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, mortality rates from heart attacks have actually doubled because patients have not been seeking out the appropriate medical attention. The good news is, is that cardiovascular disease and stroke are largely preventable with proper amounts of activity uh, and uh, healthy eating. In that spirit, it's time for us to move along with the program. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. My name is Andy Davis and I'm so excited to be joining you virtually today for the Austin Heart and Stroke Walk. On behalf of Ascension Seton, I'd like to welcome everyone to this incredible event. We also want to recognize the entire 2020 HeartWalk executive leadership team who have been instrumental in the success of the HeartWalk this year. Thank you. At Ascension Seton, we're committed to helping people lead better, healthier lives, and stronger communities. Currently, our team serves gr the greater Austin community by meeting individuals where you need us, whether it's through virtual visits or hospital needs for all ages starting at Dell Children's Medical Center. We're partnering with Dell Medical School at UT Austin to provide you with the cutting edge services close to home so that no one needs to leave Austin for the highest level of care. We understand that the first step to living your best life is good health. That's exactly why we've teamed up with the AHA for this event. At Ascension Seton, we work every day to advance the treatment and care for, the car for cardiovascular disease. We're proud to be the presenting sponsor of the American Heart Association Walk event this year. Once again, thank you for joining us virtually today. A special shout out to our sponsors, leadership team, team captains, and everyone who signed up or donated and supported this great event. The money you and your friends and family have raised will fund life-saving research and provide transformational opportunities for our community. We'd like to start off today by sharing a message from our organization. Our first date was on June 19th of 1998, which was a few months after he found out that he was diagnosed with the congestive heart failure. I immediately thought it meant a death sentence. And over a period of weeks, it got progressively worse. She accompanied me to that first visit with my cardiologist at the uh, transplant center. I had to live long enough to, to find a, a donor and find a heart. And sure enough, May the 27th, 2013, I got that call and they asked me, can you be here in 45 minutes? I said, we'll be there in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally at death's door and here I am today, I live to see it. I consider it such a blessing. Transplants are a blessing. It's almost an out of body experience when I look at him today. Thank you, Ascension Seton, for sponsoring the 2020 Austin Heart and Stroke Walk and for supporting the American Heart Association all year long. Texas Mutual Insurance Company has also been an incredible supporter of the American Heart Association. Together, Texas Mutual and the AHA have trained over 2,500 Central Texans on how to perform hands-only CPR this form of CPR has been shown to be as effective as conventional CPR for cardiac arrest at home, at work, or in public. Here's a special message from Texas Mutual Insurance Company. You saved my life when you saw me on the floor and called 911 before performing hands-only CPR. We haven't met, but your response meant I could go back to my family. Thank you for jumping in to save me.
Thank you, Texas Mutual Insurance Company. KXAN, we are a huge supporter yes. of hands-only CPR and living our best, healthiest lives. KXAN's Simple Health Initiative launched in September of 2018, and we've collaborated with the American Heart Association to raise awareness about health issues that impact our community and to provide resources to Central Texans empowering them to make healthier decisions. For more educational resources, visit KXAN's Simple Health page on our site. There you'll find heart healthy content and information designed to help you make healthier choices to live better. To underscore the importance of learning CPR, I'd like to introduce you to the Byers family. Chris Byers' life was changed one day while out during a family walk. Here's his story. Hi, I'm Chris Byers. I'm here with my wife, Robin my daughter Olivia, my other daughter Kira, and we're happy to have the opportunity to tell a story. About, I don't know, maybe 20 months ago or so, and I went for an afternoon jog, and I was maybe a quarter mile from getting back to the house on the, the neighborhood hike and bike trail when I collapsed with a sudden cardiac arrest. Two people saw me fall, and they thought I had just stumbled, and uh, they came walking up to me, and went to help me up and they realized something seriously was wrong. And they had just passed uh, two high school boys who were washing their truck. Nick Goodrum and Tyler Ludeman uh, heard him yell for help and he saw that I was not breathing, my lips were blue and he could tell there wasn't a pulse. And, and he and Nick just the previous year had gotten CPR training at Round Rock High School. So Tyler immediately started giving me CPR. It was a vigorous CPR for about five minutes until the the uh, first responders got there. And then once they, they were there, they took over and uh, they had to, I think shocked me about four or five times, kept administering to me for maybe maybe like 45 minutes. It's, it's amazing all the things that uh, these professionals do while you're lying there in the dirt. You know, I didn't have any symptoms. Um, I don't have any family history. And as they explained it to me, you know, what, what happened to me was uh, an, like an electrical issue as opposed to a heart attack where it's described as like a plumbing issue. For me, I, I have no idea anything that's going on and how hard it is on the family of all of a sudden, and when they say sudden cardiac arrest, it absolutely is sudden. Your life changes in, a, in that second. I, I can't say enough great things about uh, how well the, the things at the hospital people did for us. I mean, the nurses and the doctors were just amazing. But one thing that's stood out to me is that my cardiologist has said this more than once since then. He says, everything we would have done for you makes no difference if the boys don't do what they do in those first few seconds. About 90% of the time when uh, sudden cardiac arrest happens outside a hospital setting, it's, it's, it's fatal. We've done at least four or five CPR classes, but also we've been a lot safer with, since we had no info with them at all. So we have all, we all have medical bracelets currently. Yeah. Yep. As a result of this, I have an implanted uh, defibrillator in my chest here. And, at first, you, like I said, it's a little unnerving, but then you realize it's like having a paramedic on board with you all the time. And so I don't have any qualms about going out and jogging now or doing you know, any other sort of thing out there because I know if I have a problem, it's, this thing is gonna, gonna kick in. It's amazing because it, uh, it still has 10 years battery life left on that. That alone just blows my mind that a battery lasts that long but it actually will send reports to my cardiologist remotely. We've been a little bit more careful during COVID, of course, but um, hasn't really had any effect on Chris. We've all picked up a couple extra hobbies and um, Olivia and Chris go fishing quite often now. You know, if he, if he wasn't around, they wouldn't have this amazing opportunity and have all this quality time together. So uh, it just makes it even more special that they're able to, to go out and do that and have this great father-daughter time together. I never would have thought that I would be somebody who was, you know, a recipient of, of everything that the Heart Association has done. So I had such a good outcome and I would love to see other people have the same. The more that uh, the Heart Association does with the CPR kits and the, the research and everything, it just, it just gives more people the opportunity to have that, that outcome like me. The American Heart Association gave me a lot of opportunities to volunteer. One of the talents she has is uh, crochet. And she, as a fundraiser for the Heart Walk, she started posting these different characters, creatures that uh, she makes with crochet. And uh, 
to donate the proceeds of any that she sells to the heart water. Um, since this happened, the American Heart Association has insured all of the high schools in the Round Rock ISD uh, now have CPR kits, which before this incident, they did not have that. The parents don't realize that if your child gets CPR, there's a if they have to perform it, the odds are it's going to be on a family member. The American Heart Association touches every family because there's nobody that doesn't have a, a loved one who has some sort of issue with, with their heart. And if they don't have it yet, you know, they will at some point. And people are living longer and, and uh, living better lives because of what the Heart Association has done for them. So I've been given the most precious gift from Nick and Tyler and the first responders and the doctors. and and I just try every day to show that I deserve it. Thank you, Chris, for sharing your story today. The American Heart Association is fighting for families like the Byers family every day. In fact, ensuring that more families can thrive and share life's special moments together is why the Austin Heart and Stroke Walk is such an important event in our community. The organization is focused not only on heart health, but is committed to make major strides in the areas of tobacco and vaping, reducing chronic conditions, women's health, COVID-19, and nutrition security. Yeah, that's right, Tom. The American Heart Association is actively involved with those issues affecting lives right here in Austin. Uh, families are truly at the heart of this organization. Here is a, a family-friendly health tip from Samsung Austin Semiconductor. Thanks, Samsung Austin Semiconductor, for that quick and easy health tip. Now, speaking of families, the next family we're going to hear from is the Coulter family. And their journey began a couple of years ago with their oldest daughter, Madeline, and ended with her younger brother, Owen Coulter. Hi, I'm Kristen Coulter, Owen's mom. And I'm Darren Coulter, Owen's dad. And we want to thank all of you for inviting us to join you today virtually to share Owen's miracle story. Our medical journey actually started a couple years ago when our daughter Madeline, seven years of age at that time, became very, very ill. Darren decided to take her to Dell Children's Hospital. She was diagnosed with Kawasaki's disease, uh, and luckily we had the great doctors at Dell Children's that realized the symptoms and understood what was going on and treated her effectively with the IVIG. One year later, in the month of December, we would end up back at Dell Children's Hospital, but this time it was with our son, Owen. Owen had been experiencing some symptoms that Darren and I just really couldn't put our finger on. And he was experiencing a really bad headache. Um, and along with that, he was experiencing uh, pain in his arms and legs. Um, that was just very uncomfortable for him. We pulled back his blanket that was on top of him, and at that point we saw that his ankles had a purplish tint. That was our point where we said we've got to take him to Dell Children's. Owen arrived uh, by ambulance uh, to uh, Dell Children's to our emergency room, and he was being assessed by our emergency room staff uh, when he actually collapsed, and uh, it became pretty clear to our staff that uh, he was having a cardiac arrest. Our staff uh, in the emergency room, nurses, uh, technicians, basically lined up to uh, perform CPR on him. And the doctor and I look at each other and he just looks at me and says, you know what, hey, we have this machine, it's called an ECMO. Um, it's basically a Hail Mary, but it's kind of all we got, what do you think? And I said, man, if that's all we got, let's do it. You know, let's not give up on this. So we were able to uh, initiate ECMO uh, support on, on him uh, successfully. By then it had been 90 minutes of CPR. So the machine takes all the blood out of the body, oxygenates the blood and then pumps it back on. The cardiac output that the heart can provide because it's so sick to, to do so. At this time, he still had kidney failure. He had at least two strokes that we know of. He was still in respiratory failure. Um, and, and during this time, they didn't know what his brain activity was going to be um, just because of the length of CPR and how much he got. Um, so that we were very worried mm -hmm. um, just in that, that sense of how Owen would be coming out of this. 
the greatest thing that I can remember was when Owen looked up at me and said, when is mommy going to be here? And I knew <laughs> at that point that we had our own back, you know, just, just saying that was, it meant the world to me. It was a huge celebration the day that we that we got to go home. It was day 57 and we had superheroes uh, show up to the party, all of his nurses and doctors, and it was a huge celebration of how how he fought this battle and he won and he he was our superhero. So Owen's uh, diagnosis was viral myocarditis and that's an infection of the heart muscle by a virus. Um, and pretty much any virus can cause it. Uh, it can be even the common cold virus, uh, um, just as, as it affects different parts of the body, it can also affect the heart muscle. So it's not a very common infection, but a very common occurrence after, after an infection, but it can happen. Uh, and in the case of Owen, I mean, there was nothing uh, predisposing him to developing, developing that. Hi, we're the Coulters, and here's an update on how we're doing now. So Owen has been home for almost a year and a half. Owen's been doing great. Um, he's still in physical therapy. So we go to physical therapy um, one day a week and just being able to ride that bike even faster than he did last year. We're doing first grade virtually right now and he's doing really well. He's reading us books, honestly. His recovery has been really a beautiful thing to watch and he continues to amaze us. He's, he's such a strong, strong little dude. The new norm has really impacted us, you know, um, staying at home, doing a lot of things around the house and just with each other, you know, stop. We're not um, hanging out with many friends and, and going to many places, uh, kind of taking the, advantage of uh, the this, this situation here right now and getting to see the, the country and making memories with each other. We're all just still taking in a lot of how this virus impacts, especially high risk kids like Owen that suffered from you know cardiac arrest and a stroke and so there's just a lot of unknown so we've just been extra extra careful. Dr. Mary has, is um, I would say probably one of the more influential people in our lives through Owen's miraculous healing and you know is always very mindful of um, just giving us all the information we needed to know as parents to make informed decisions. He's one of the ones that went in and turned the ER into OR and perform the surgery on Owen inside the emergency room. We always owe a debt of gratitude to him for, for his skills and his hands for doing that for us. Having congenital heart disease or any type of pediatric heart disease is a huge challenge to our families. We understand that. We know that it's a very hard journey that, they're, uh, that they have to go through. It's just to say that we as a medical team and the American Heart Association were here to help uh, walk that journey that we know is challenging uh, with them. The American Heart Association, the work that they do, it matters. It's leading towards more research. It's allowing, you know, commu the community to partake in this, uh, this, this kind of bigger, greater need. I mean, more and more research is only going to um, support kiddos like Owen and other families. And so it means the world to us to be able to be a part of something so great that has such great impact and is changing lives. Being a first responder, I really respect them in a way that they're advocating so much for the CPR and you know bystander CPR um, and how important that is. Mm -hmm. uh, we obviously learned that firsthand. That CPR, as soon as he coded, you know they were on it right away, and um, it made the difference. He made such a full recovery because of that, and there wasn't any lapse. And and you know I I give thanks for American Heart Association for their continued advocacy for the CPR and, and the CPR program. Thanks for all your support. What an incredible story. Thank you, Darren, Kristen, and Owen for joining us this morning to share your story of strength, faith, and triumph. And thank you, Dr. Carlos Mary and the entire Ascension Seton team. We are so grateful for you for sharing your story and for your commitment to helping other families who may be experiencing similar circumstances. Yes, thank you for sharing your story. Now the time has come to get those hearts pumping right where you are. <laughs> That's right, get up, get ready, get moving. Alex from Austin Fit Magazine will be leading all of us in a fun, family-friendly workout. 
If you are not quite ready though to move with us, no problem, don't worry about that. Um, grab your bike for an afternoon ride. Go on a walk with the kiddos or take a dance break. That's always fun. Just be sure to get moving. Take it away, Austin Fit. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alex Earl. I am with Austin Fit Magazine. Uh, we are a proud supporter and sponsor of the American Heart Association and specifically the, uh, the Heart Walk. Um, so I'm here today to give you guys a workout. Uh, now don't be alarmed. You can see I'm in the comfort of my own home. I actually don't even have shoes on. I have a towel set up here nicely. Uh, this is going to be a relatively, I hope, comfortable workout, something that people of all ages and fitness abilities can do. Uh, and so I'll quickly explain the workout and then we'll get right into it. The nice thing about this workout is that it's only going to be about five minutes long. <laughs> uh, secondly, no equipment necessary, just you, body weight, that's all we're doing. And my favorite part about this workout, which may not be your favorite part, but it is for me, it's an ab workout. So we're gonna be focusing purely on parkour. Uh, and the important thing to think about with this is if you're struggling at any given point in time or you need to take a break, take a break, it's okay. The important thing is that you're making an effort to be here. Uh, and so with that, I will get into what the exercises are. So we're basically gonna do one minute sets with four different exercises. I'm gonna go from one time through. We're gonna start with a crunch. Hopefully most people are familiar with what a, what a crunch is. So we'll start with a crunch. From there, we'll move into a um, bicycle. Following the bicycle, we will go into leg lifts. And, least, and lastly, we will do planks. Uh, so I will demonstrate the exercises and then I'll go ahead and start a timer and then we'll go through them. Join me as you can, take a break if you need to, easy peasy. So, like I said, you don't even really need anything. I have a towel, uh, I don't even have a yoga mat. I'm here in my living room floor uh, to do this workout. At the end of it, your core should be on fire. Uh, so in this case, we'll actually start with leg lifts, then we'll go to bicycles, or I'm sorry, we'll go leg lifts, crunches, bicycles, and we'll end with, with planks. So to get started, we're going to lay down on our back, and we're basically going to do a minute worth of work. And in the leg lift position, you're basically laying on your back, and you're going to simply lift your legs. About six inches off the ground is all you need. And we're going to start with that and do about 20 seconds hold with simply just a leg lift. After 20 seconds, we're gonna do a variation where we're gonna flutter. After 20 seconds of work fluttering, we're gonna do the final 20 seconds doing a scissor, one leg over the other. Again, keeping your feet about six inches off the ground the entire time. All right, let me get us started and we will get after it. Ready, three, two, one, hold. Legs up. Try to stay still. Should be relatively easy, maybe. More than halfway there. All right, here we go. Now we switch into flutters. 20 seconds of work, flutter kick. Halfway there. And we are on to the last 20 seconds. Scissors, one foot over the other. Again, control motion, core engaged. Feet approximately six inches off the ground. You're close to the end. And time. Woo. Okay, one down. Three to go. Actually got me a little bit of winded there. All right, um, next up, we'll do crunches. 
We're going to get, uh, do the same sort of format. Three different variations of a crunch, 20 seconds for each variation. Uh, we will start with a very standard crunch, which is essentially feet up, nice and comfy. And the goal here is to simply engage the core. One thing that's important, you might want to put your hands on your, on your head, which is totally fine. Just don't put the strain on your neck. You want to make sure that you are nice and controlled. So we're going to do 20 seconds like that. We're going to then follow it up, feet up, another 20 seconds with the feet up. And then last but definitely not least, oblique work, what I like to call angry penguins. We're basically tapping the feet, the ankle, whatever you might be able to touch. And you're going back and forth again, controlled motion, core engaged the entire time. All right? Okay. I think that's enough break for you guys. We will get started in three, two, one, go. And this is where you start to find it. Feel that you start to find that you feel it a little bit. Woo. 20 seconds done. Feet up. Continue the crunch. Halfway there. Five. All right, last 20 seconds. Angry penguins. You're reaching for your heels. You should feel that oblique engage. Remember, core engage the entire time. You're not laying on your back and just moving around. You're up a little bit. All right, three, two, one, and we are done. Okay, two down, two to go. This next one is my nemesis. This one, in my opinion, is one of the hardest core exercises that you can do, and it's bicycles. And in this variation, we're gonna do two different versions of bicycles. We're gonna do a slow bike, and we're also gonna do a efficient, more quickly paced bike movement. Uh, so I will demo and then we'll get into it. We're gonna do 30 seconds of each. We'll start with a normal paced bicycle, which you may have done before. If possible, try to get the knee and the elbow to touch and switch sides, okay? That's the movement we're looking for. The second variation is the worst, worst meaning the hardest, it's a slow bike. You are going as slow as humanly possible through this movement. And you will feel it. All right, we're gonna get started. Three, two, one, go, go. 30 seconds here, normal pace. Again, slight elevation not putting any major pressure on your head or your neck. See, in my case, I can actually not even have my hands touching. And we're just going in this repetitive motion. And you should feel it. Almost there. 30 seconds. Down. Whew, do a quick stretch into the slow. These are the tough ones. The goal is to go as slow as you can and try to make that contact with that knee and elbow. Whew. Nobody likes to do these, but you sure do feel your abs engage. Three more seconds. Two, one, done. Oh, all right. Three down, one more to go. This last one, again, hopefully a movement that you've, you've done before, uh, is a plank. Uh, we'll go back to the three variations, 20 seconds of each variation. 
uh, for a minute of work. Uh, but uh, for a plank, we are going to be doing a very common push-up plank hold, and we'll hold that for 20 seconds. From there, we'll go down to elbows and hold for 20 seconds. And then last variation is staying on the elbows and doing hip touches, trying to get some mobility to the hips, engaging the obliques, trying to get the hip to touch down to the ground. All right. Let's get the watch going. Okay, we'll get going in three, two, one, go, go. Knees. For some, really challenging, others, not so much. Try to keep a straight line. Uh, four, three, two, one, down we go. Elbows, try to keep that butt nice and tucked in. I struggle with that sometimes. Let's see. We've got five seconds. Three, two, one. Last final movement. Hip touches. Again, it's more about control, not so much about the speed. You're looking for mobility here. Let's see where we're at. Oh, and done. Oh. All right. Oh. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> So that is about a five minute workout. No equipment, you can do it in the privacy of your home. Hopefully you get a little bit of a sweat, get your abs going, and uh, I hope it helps. Thanks everybody for uh, tuning in and uh, for all that you do for the American Heart Association and the Heart Walk. We're thankful. Thank you from Austin Fit Magazine, appreciate it. Regular physical activity can make a difference in how you feel, think, and move. Yes, Tom, that's right. In fact, the American Heart Association suggests getting at least 150 minutes of physical activity each week. Now, this can mean a brisk walk with the dog, doing a few laps around your neighborhood, or even learning TikTok dances, <laughs> right? For an hour, whatever you choose. Just those, move. Those would be some nice dances <laughs> to see. What you eat can have just as much as an impact on your health and well-being. Now, I know that we may or may not have tried a fad diet or two and no judgments there, but healthful eating is all about balance. Yeah, Tom, I could not agree more. It's not always about denying yourself the foods that you crave, but finding cleaner ways to prepare them and adding more color to your meals. Here's a message from top sponsors and longtime community partners, HEB and Harvey Cleary Builders. What's better than water? Flavor-infused water. Making your own infused water is, for the most part, calorie-free and is a refreshing way to stay hydrated. For a delicious cucumber water, simply add two thinly sliced medium cucumbers into a pitcher. Cover with ice and fill with water. Still want a little more flavor to your cucumber water? Simply add half a lime, six or more sprigs of cilantro, and infuse for four to eight hours and serve cold. For a sweet orange and blueberry water, add three mandarin oranges cut into wedges, two handfuls of berries into a pitcher. Cover with ice and fill the pitcher with water. Make sure to let it sit overnight to infuse. 
For more unique infused water, fill a pitcher halfway with water. Gently push into the water two sliced grapefruits with the rinds removed, two sprigs of rosemary, and cover with ice. Add water to fill the pitcher. It's okay to be generous with the rosemary, so feel free to experiment. Let it sit overnight in the refrigerator before serving. This simple recipe only calls for half a lemon and half a lime, thinly sliced, and added to a pitcher of water and ice. Thinly slice an orange and a lemon. Tear into small pieces a handful of mint leaves. Add ingredients to a pitcher, cover with ice, and let sit overnight. Simply add four quarter-sized pieces of fresh peeled ginger root. Add in a cup of fresh or frozen mango, cover with ice and water, and let it sit in a refrigerator one to three hours before serving. Add half a sliced lemon, six to eight strawberries whole and quartered, and a handful of basil to a pitcher. Cover with ice and fill with water. Let it infuse for two to three hours and serve. Four handfuls of thinly sliced grapes, 20 to 24 basil leaves, a squeeze of lime, and fill with water. Add watermelon and mint to a pitcher, cover with ice, and fill with water. Let it sit for two to eight hours and serve. There you have just a few ideas of how to infuse your water and make hydration fun. Thank you HEB and Harvey Cleary Builders for your continued support of the Austin 2020 Heart and Stroke Walk. To all of you at home, remember to show your support of the American Heart Association by texting your gift to the number on the chat box or by visiting austinheartwalk.org to donate. Okay, don't forget to snap those selfies now <laughs> and then share them with everyone. Tag again, American Heart TX with the hashtag ATX Heartwalk. And be sure, of course, your posts are public so that we can see them and we can share them. Yeah, we're going to see them and we should probably take some too. That'll be fun. The time has come to announce our top company, top hospital, and top team. Okay, Tom, this is the part I really look forward to, honestly, because we finally get the chance to celebrate the companies, employees, the community participants who worked so hard especially this year, right? To raise critical funds that will support the American Heart Association's continued COVID-19 research local initiatives, such as providing tools, equipment, and resources to the people who need them. Students navigating new ways of learning and moving at home. Women embarking on STEM careers. These companies and teams have gone above and beyond in supporting our mission. Thank you. Thank you all for your support. Check out the chat box for the complete winners list. The full list of winners now posted on the Austin Heart and Stroke Walk website at www.austinheartwalk.org. Tom, don't forget to announce that our top fitness team and the individual with the most steps will not only receive major bragging rights, but will also be featured in the November edition of Austin Fit Magazine. That is very so cool. Fun. Everyone will see that. The top fitness team and the person with the most steps is going to be featured in Austin Fit Magazine next month. Thank you, Austin Fit, for making this happen for the participants. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm Will's mom. And Rich, Will's dad. We um, had a normal pregnancy, had the baby, everything was great. We went to our nine month appointment um, just for our typical checkup and they heard a, you know, a, a murmur. We went into the cardiologist and so they did come in and tell us that he did have regurgitation between his mitral valve. <laughs> we decided to get a second opinion as well, that they actually found an isolated hole in his mitral valve, um, referred to as a mitral valve cleft. And at that point it was definitively clear we'd have to have open heart surgery. And so, of course, like even saying that gives me goosebumps today because that was terrifying to think that someone's going to crack our son's chest and go in and stop their heart was just um, overwhelming. At that point, they basically said to us, like, it's a wait and see. His heart's great right now. It's strong. Through the year and a half long journey that we went through, by the time it came time for actual surgery, Dell Children's and the community in Austin had started to grow. They had brought in a huge heart. Uh, program led by Dr. Frazier, who will end up being Will's surgeon and now um, a close friend of ours. We took to him and we gave faith and trust in the hospital. That was a growing program. And he had his open heart surgery. It'll be almost two years um, on December 6, um, 2018. And so, yeah, we stayed home and hunkered down. And then four weeks later, they said we look good. Six weeks later, we were back in daycare. And three more months after that, we got the clear. We didn't need to come back for another year. So it was pretty 
amazing to go from drama for two years to you're good. See you in a year. <laughs> One of the cardiologists said they were just like, don't treat him any different than any other you oh, know, yeah. kid that never went through anything like this. Like, you know, he's gonna be back to his old self a lot faster than you're probably gonna want him to. Um, we feel like we've kind of come past the big hump and now really our focus and attention is is on helping others and, and helping people and other moms and dads like, you know, have a place to go to ask questions and really like a large part of why we care so much about sharing our story, especially for other parents, is that it was so hard to um, to find uh, the resources and understanding of where to start and who to talk to. I'm just so grateful for the opportunity that, you know, the American Heart Association is giving us today, but also one that Dell has provided, which is just to highlight and elevate the stories of families. Because the more you can see someone like yourself um, and children see them thriving, um, the more, um, hope it gives you in the moment. I mean, one in four children are born with a heart defect. Of that, 25% require surgery, but it's a 1% survival risk in surgery. That's pretty impressive to think how put your heart on a machine to run your body while they spend a couple hours or whatever, you know, a lot of leaps and strides in it, and they're, you know, helping a lot of people to live a normal life. Like I talked to Will, you know, about, you know, your heart. I was like, you know, that's the, the engine that, you know, that runs your whole body. You think about the American Heart Association and what it does, it's not just, you know, 80, 90 year olds that have heart issues. Everybody has a heart, everybody has to have a functioning heart that works well, or, you know, their body, you know, doesn't thrive. In whatever manner you can give, um, it's beneficial to, you know, a newborn baby that's, you know, two minutes old, or a, you know, 90 year old. You know, you're giving to the, the whole spectrum of, you know, humanity. Dr. Fraser for fixing me. We've come to the end of our program. What a great heart and stroke walk. I love seeing everyone's photos, your posts, your updates on the AHA Facebook page. We hope you will continue to share your heart walk photos with us all day long. Use the hashtag ATXHeartWalk so that the team can share them with the world. And don't forget, make them public so we can see them. Yes, very <laughs> important. Thank you all for joining us this morning and crossing another St. David's Healthcare finish line. Again, thank you to our 2020 co-chairs, Andy Davis and Dr. Mark Pierwitz, our Healthy for Good sponsors, Texas Mutual Insurance Company and Ascension Seton. And thank you to the executive leadership team and our team captains and participants. Thank you all so much, and we cannot wait to see you all next year. Stay tuned for more from our local sponsors.